You want to talk about in-laws, not Canadian, let's talk about how to handle in-laws and how that can impact the happiness and success of your relationship. It's, it's almost a cliche. I mean, it's, it's in every joke that every guy makes, right? Talking about his mother-in-law, the in-laws, the mother-in-laws is always the butt of a joke. But the fact of the matter is, is that if you're looking to have a happy marriage and one that lasts a long time, ours has lasted 30 years, you've got to have some kind of practical understanding of how to deal with in-laws in your marriage. And this is my wife, Liz. We've been married for about 30 years. And uh, we've, we've got some insights, I suppose, we're going yeah. to share here. So, Liz, tell me about your in-laws and how you've been able to handle 30 years of dealing with them. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, so your side of the family. Well, that's what I'm saying. Right. right. And keep your distance. No. What does that mean? No, but you're joking, but I mean, do you mean that? No, I mean, but we don't. I mean, we're not always together with our... I mean, some families are together a lot more with their extended family than we are. That is true. Now, we've been blessed with uh, time and space and distance issues in the sense that when we got married, uh, we were married down near her hometown in Arizona, but her parents still lived there. And a lot of your siblings and other people were still there. Right. But we moved up here to Salt Lake City, where I'm from, for the most part, but even then, we weren't terribly close to anyone until like the f first week of our marriage. Because oh, yeah, my know. mother did move into the same apartment complex as, right. <laughs> as we did. But she didn't really bug us. Or right. Anything. She was in her own apartment and she didn't bug us because she's not, she generally doesn't bug right. us. Right. Right. Yeah. But as we, certainly through the years, we've had interactions with both sides of the in-law right. equation. Right. We had people live with us. We have your mother and on, living with us now. She lives with us now. We've uh, had your sisters and other people in your family come and go. My sister has come and right. gone, and different phases in life. And you know, I, I guess the best bit of advice that that we can give, and maybe this is part of who we are too, is that, and it's it's informed by our faith. So I mean, I'm going to take the easy one on this one first, which you may or may not understand, but. You know, we believe in having an eternal family and that families can be together forever. And so we don't see in-laws or even extended in-laws as just an appendage to our relationship, like people we just have to put up with or we'll learn to get along with. There's a deeper sense to uh, kind of this eternal family. And, you know, when I marry you, I mean, I really am becoming part of a family of of your siblings hmm. and your parents. Well, that's true. I, I mean, know, I just haven't thought of it that way. So I'm just saying there's, for, for my money, I guess what I'm saying is, is there's more at stake with our marriage um, based on how I treat your family. Because our marriage is very special to us. In our religion, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, it's a very holy and sacred ordinance that we've been married, right? Right. And so for me, I'm going to, maybe the word is put up with more, be patient with more, or maybe be more committed to eventually loving and caring for your family than I might be if I felt like this marriage had no grounds for a future or it's like a lot of people are seeing them, eh, you can always get out of it. You can always yeah. get divorced. I guess you can I always break up. I just didn't think of it that way. I mean, it makes sense. No, that's why I'm saying it and you're yeah, not. Yeah, but it's just, I mean, my thing is, I think you've always got to side with your spouse rather than your family. I mean, once you're married to me, that's like you would take my side over your mom's. Sure, sure. And I would do the same for you. I mean, I think our unit has to be the most important and ex Extended family, you can either put up with or not, but I don't think you have to. If it's damaging to your relationship, I'm fine with not being with that person. Wow. Well, there's some... You know what I mean? But you don't want anything to 
hurt if my sister was always bashing yeah, but, you or saying something about you. I wouldn't hang out with her. No, oh, okay, no, I, I absolutely agree. You with get that. what I'm saying? Yes, of course, I, I do, I do. But the question is, how do you handle in-laws in your marriage? And I, that's one way of handling them, especially, them <laughs> especially if they're rude about your spouse. But you're getting into now realms of loyalty to one another, which I think does bleed into it. Because, you know, will a man leave a, leave his mother? Yes. To cleave to a woman and twain they shall become whatever the Bible says. I just think your issues with extended family are less if you are loyal to each other. Because if your family sees you're loyal to each other, they're not going to bash your, husband, your spouse in front of you. You know what okay. I mean? So that so, loyalty has to be first. So and now, then you can reach agreed. out to your So now flipping family. away from sort of the negative side of the question, <laughs> how do you like handle in-laws? Oh, but that's true. No, but you're right. The point is, anytime you bring up a question and you use the word handle. Okay, most people who are looking up how to handle their in-laws are not looking up from a positive, I love my in-laws Well, that's what so I'm trying much, to say. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So how do you do that? And what you're saying is you're, you're just laying the groundwork that our relationship is more important than that relationship. It True. Is. But let's get to the how you handle it. And I think how you handle it is you learn to love them and accept them even when they can act that way. Now, we haven't really had that kind of no. a struggle in our marriage. But growing to love her siblings it was a process that I was willing to embark on. We've also been burned by in-laws on my side where we've seen where um, the, the absolute abject refusal to be included with the in-laws, I think led to an absolute disintegration of a marriage. I don't know if you know who I'm talking yeah. about. But if I'm married to her, I have to assume that she loves her parents and her siblings and her side of the family. And, you have and to. that when they come over and visit or we're having a get together, that even though it's her side, it's my side too. I'm married you. into that family. So I'm going to be out here. I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be socializing. I'm not going to go, oh, I don't want to stay at your parents because we got to talk to your parents. I'm going to be a complete part of that family. Right. And vice versa. She does the same. I mean, she calls my mom, mom. I never really did that with your mom when she was alive. I might have at this point if she right. stayed alive. Right. I don't call your dad, dad. But, you know, it's just that's a personal thing. But, but still, there, is, there has to be respect and love and acceptance. Well, and I think it also helps just in your marriage if you accept my family that's more attractive to me. You know what I mean? Right. And like, I, my sister lives near me now and I do a lot with my sister and that doesn't bug you. You know, I'll right. talk to her on the phone or whatever. You yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're totally fine with it. It's my sister and you want me to have if, that relationship. And if there's family reunions, another right. tip here is go along on the family reunion. Again, you're part of that family now. And you don't get to beg out, I'll just take a golf weekend while you go and hang with your people. It doesn't work that way. A no, marriage no. isn't going isn't to last. But I do love your initial bit of advice, and we can end with this one, I think, unless you have others. No. But I mean, really, it's about you two. And really, you defer to your partner, your spouse, your significant other first. And you always take their side. Now, obviously, there are things that are extreme and dramatic, like right, abuse right, or whatever. Yeah. And you might need to bring some people in for help or emergencies or whatever. But the um, talking down, the throwing under the bus image to your spouse, to, to your own people, that's going to continue. That's going to alienate that in-law relationship with your spouse right. more and more and more. Keep it between yourselves. Do the best you can to handle your own problems alone. And let the in-laws just blissfully enjoy what appears to be a wonderful marriage. And if you can do that for the first 10 to 20 years, Good. you'll probably get to the 30 like we did. Well, that was a meaty topic. And if you have any additional thoughts, comments, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. We try to respond the best we can, unless it's purposely abusive or offensive uh, language or tone or tenor, we'll probably delete those. But anybody that's truthfully wants to talk to us, please leave a comment and remember to subscribe. Thanks.